and uh, the minister will be reading out the statement and it's over to you minister Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all media houses, fellow South Africans. Thank you for this opportunity to take you through on what the cabinet would have decided going forward. On the Russia-Ukraine conflict, cabinet remains deeply concerned by the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict. The socio-economic cause of conflict is devastating and its impact will be felt around the world. Cabinet calls for a negotiated diplomatic solution and urge all parties to uphold and protect human rights and abide by their obligations in terms of international law and in international humanitarian law. Government continues to assist South African citizens to leave Ukraine and a number of them have since returned home. We have also expressed our concern at all at the ill treatment of Africans trying to cross international borders during this time. We believe that developing countries must enjoy a greater share of voice and influence in institutions of global governance. South Africa therefore advocates for a more equitable international system and for the reform of multilateral institutions to promote greater equality. On the South African Investment Conference, South Africa will host its fourth South African Investment Conference on Thursday, 24th March this year at the Sandin Convention Center in Johannesburg. The conference is part of government's investment drive to attend to attract 1.2 trillion over five years, and it attracts delegates from South Africa worldwide to discuss investment opportunities. Since the first investment conference in 2018, South Africa has attracted 774 billion in commitments, in commitments across the wide range of economic sectors. Of 152 investment announcements made previously, 45 projects have already been completed. A further 57 projects are currently under construction. As of February 2022, those firms who have completed their reporting have advised that 314 billion, which is 40.6% of the committed investment pledges have been expanded. This new investment will help us to grow the economy, create much needed jobs, and improve the lives of people. An update on the coronavirus. Cabinet acknowledged the country's efforts towards the fight against COVID-19, but cautioned that battle is not yet over and urged all people in South Africa to remain vigilant and continue protecting themselves to stop the spread of the deadly virus. Cabinet is also pleased that almost 32 million COVID-19 vaccines doses have been administered and that over 42% of our adult population is fully vaccinated. However, unvaccinated people still remain unprotected against COVID-19 and pose a health risk to themselves and those around them. Vaccination remains the best way to fight COVID-19 and cabinet calls on everyone age 12 and above to vaccinate without further delay. Booster shots are now freely available for most people and cabinet calls on those who are eligible to get boosted, boosted as soon as possible. We must also continue to wear masks that cover both the mouth and the nose, wash or sanitize our hands, frequently keep safe social distance and ensure adequate ventilation by opening windows. On the Africa Energy in Daba, Cabinet welcomed the successful conclu conclusion of the hybrid Africa Energy Indaba held in Cape Town 
from the 1st to the 3rd of March. And under the theme, open quote, the business meeting of, the business meeting of choice for Africa energy sector, close quote, the gathering brought together influential global and local players from the energy sector to deliberate on how the African continent can use energy as a catalyst to grow the economy and improve the lives of people. South Africa remains committed to achieving an energy mix that is consistent with its development goals and its climate change goals whilst ensuring security supply, security of supply. Security cluster appointments. Cabinet welcomed the recent high-level appointment in the National Prosecution Authority and the state security. President, President Ramaphosa appointed advocate Andrea Johnson to head the NPA's investigation directorate and Ambassador Tembisile Majola as the new Director General of SSA. The President also appointed advocate Navila Sumaru as Director of Public Prosecution in the Free State, Advocate Matozi Rachel Makari Sakalelo as DPP in Northwest and Advocate Nicolette Bell as DPP in the Western Cape. These appointments will strengthen our capacity to investigate and prosecute all acts of crime and corruption. Service delivery oversight visit. Cabinet welcomed the successful oversight visit by the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure, Ms. Patricia Delil, and Minister in the Presidency, Minister Mondo Kungubele, to the N2 nodal project in the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality in the Eastern Cape on Tuesday, 8 March 2022. The visit forms part of government's initiative towards a more regular direct assessment of progress made on the implementation of infra infrastructure investment plan to reignite the economy and create jobs. This specific project comprises 12,100 new housing opportunities with over 500,000 meter square retail, commercial office and industrial facilities, as well as the full spectrum of community and social facilities. On the International Women's Day, South Africa joined the international community in commemorating International Women's Day on Tuesday, 8 March. This day is an opportunity to reflect on how far we have come in advocating, in advancing gender equality and what needs to be done to become a more gender equal nation. Cabinet is impressed by the many successes worth celebrating since the dawn of democracy. South Africa has made progress in promoting equality for women in areas like government, civil society, the administration of justice, sport and culture. However, cabinet reiterates that more still needs to be done to ensure full and equal participation of women in South Africa. Cabinet also welcome the appointment of South Africa to the chairpersonship of the 66th session of the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women to be held from Monday, 14th March to Friday, 25th March. On the state security, Cabinet noted the United States Treasury arrest of individuals allegedly involved in money laundering. We continue to work with our international partners to stem the flow of illicit funds. Our security forces remain on high alert and are in constant liaison with foreign intelligence services, both within South Africa and abroad. Their work includes information exchange on threats presented by violent extremism and terrorism. On the public violence, Cabinet condemned the recent incidents of violence and public clashes in Alexander near Santin. No amount of discontent can justify the violation of people's rights in, in this country. Cabinet welcomed the speedy intervention by law enforcement agencies, which resulted in calm being restored in the area and the arrest of several alleged perpetrators of public violence. Communities are urged to use peaceful means to resolve disputes and to report all illegal activities to law enforcement agents. On the economy, Cabinet has noted the gross, domestic, the, the gross domestic product figures released by Statistics South Africa recently and which show that 
South Africa's GDP grew by 1,2% in the fourth quarter of 2021 after shrinking by 1,7% in the third quarter of 2021. This brings South Africa's annual growth rate for 2021 to 4,9%. The main contributors to this growth were recorded in agriculture, manufacturing, services and transport. Cabinet remains resolute to continue working with its social partners towards our inclusive economic growth and create an environment where we will be able to address the challenges of unemployment, poverty and inequalities. Auction of the high demand radio frequency spectrum. Cabinet congratulated the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa for the commencement of the auction of the high demand radio frequency spectrum despite the ongoing litigations. It also congratulated the bidders who participated in the auction on Tuesday 8 and Thursday 10 March 22, which shows the intent by the telecommunication industry to continue investing in the digital infrastructure in South Africa. Government remains committed to creating an enabling environment for radio spectrum to be used optimally, not only by the telecommunication industries, but also to the benefit economy and society. The licensing of high demand radio spectrum will improve the ability of mobile telecommunication operators to build robust telecommunications with greater penetration and reach. Great benefits of this long awaited process include the reduction of the cost of data and voice communication. The spectrum is also expected to contribute to economic transformation in the various sectors and the proceeds of the auction will inject over 8 billion into the national fiscus. On the national lotteries, cabinet noted the remarkable progress achieved by the special investigation unit investing, investigating in their intensive investigation of maladministration and corruption within the NLC and urge the law enforcement agents dealing with this matter to complete their work as soon as possible. This will ensure that the necessary steps can be taken to hold accountable persons or organizations implicate, implicated in the unlawful misappropriation of funds earmarked to benefit the poor. On the cabinet decisions, with regard to the National Infrastructure Plan, cabinet approved the National Infrastructure Plan 2050 for implementation. The NIP provides catalytic pro project and are meant to contribute towards the country's long-term economic and social developmental goals. The plan received a number of written comments after it was published for public comments in 2021. Inputs were also received from the public consultation with various stakeholders in the infrastructure sector. The consultation also included regional and continental bodies such as Southern Development Community and African Union Commission for Infrastructure. The NIP provides for the development of the country's infrastructure networks that are aligned to national special development framework and the district development model. It also focuses the construction of infrastructure towards socio-economic development and also to generate employment and broad-based black economic empowerment opportunities. Again, this is affirmation that the president is leading an infrastructure-led economic recovery. On the, on the liquefied petroleum gas rollout strategy 2022, the cabinet approved the publications of the LPG rollout strategy of 2022 in the government gazette for public comment. The strategy seeks to contribute towards addressing country's energy supply challenges. The strategy deals with, with amongst others, the, the structural features of the current LPG market, existing infrastructure, the pricing structure, and the current local manufacturing capacity of the LPG cylinders. The strategy also deals with the safety and awareness campaign to raise the profile of domestic gas as an environmentally friendly fuel. On the exploration strategy for the mining industry of South Africa, Cabinet approved the exploration strategy for the mining industry of South Africa. The strategy will, amongst others, provide immediate intervention in its implementation plan 
to undertake a comprehensive geoscience mapping to improve the country's geoscience data. The stationalization of the Batupili revitalization strategy. The strategy is an outcome.